Hello, my lovely pen friends. Welcome back to another fountain pen review. Now, we are going back to the El Paso-based firm of Classic Pens, formerly Classic Pens, currently Lambrou Pens. When this pen was created, it was created under the Classic Pens name, so that's the name I'm going to use in the video because that's the name that's on the pen. The pen in question is the LM1 Red Flame, or K-N, K-A-E-N. So, I've said this several times, but if you watch my videos, you know I there are a couple of uh, classic pens that I have in my collection that I really like, the LB5 being among them. Uh, I also have done a review of the LB3 Jupiter, which uses the same basic shape as the LM1, but is full of, uses the blue material and has a bunch of inlay of gold and silver to represent the stars and planets. So this is a fairly early version. This came out in 2007. It's one of their earlier uh, earlier pens under the classic pens name. And it was a limited edition, uh, edition of 500 pens. Now, initially there were supposed to be 375 fountain pens and 125 rollerball or ballpoints. Uh, I spoke with Andy at the San Francisco show, Andy Lambrew of Lambrew Pens. And um, what he told me was that when they sold the rollerball ballpoints together as a set, they made them the same number. So you would get like two number 125s, for instance. One was a fountain pen, one was a rollerball. Uh, he said, if we had to do it over again, we wouldn't do that because what happened is some people converted the fountain pens to roller or the, the roller balls or ballpoints to fountain pens. And so you ended up with two fountain pens with the same number. Uh, so there, they were limited to a total of 500. And so that's just something to keep in mind. If you're really, really, uh, wanting to have a single number and there's no one else that's got that number. That's something to be aware of with this pen. It doesn't really matter to me because I could not care less about the uh, the limited edition numbers on on pens. I just I don't care. Um, sidebar: Remember the phrase is "I couldn't care less" or "could not care less," not "I could care less." That's not the correct thing. So if you say "I could care less," you're saying it wrong. You should repent and change your ways. All right. Back to the pen. Let's go through the design. So obviously, the first thing to catch your eye about the LM1 is the gorgeous diffusion bonded material from which it is made. This is the material that kind of put classic pens on my map. Uh, just cast in three millimeter sheets of this beautiful acrylic and then diffusion bonded together, cut across the grain, and you get these beautiful striations and, and colors. It just it is hard to photograph how beautiful this material is. In person, it just, it feels like a lava flow. It's just full of motion and energy. It, it really is a gorgeous material. They made the LB5 out of this material as well, and it's one of the two colors of the LB5 I do not have in my collection. So if anyone has a red LB5 that they are looking to sell, Stephen Brown, I'm speaking to you, sir. Uh, <laughs> please contact me because uh, I would be interested in getting a hold of the red LB5 or the blue LB5. In any case, the LM1 is a much smaller pen than the LB5. It is more kind of what I would consider a mid-sized pen. It's not super small. It's not super big either. By comparison, here is the brand's LB6. Um, you know, chunkier, a little bit longer, but this is a much larger pen than the LM1. The LM1 has kind of the necktie clip on it, rounded finial, very classic shape, kind of, you know, expands in girth toward the cap band. And then the cap band says classic LM1, flame red. And then this is number, excuse me, I can't read this here, number 90 of 500. And then the little kind of necktie logo thing there. The barrel tapers down, you know, stays pretty consistent, then tapers down to this gold band. And then you've got a, a rounded long finial here. It takes one full turn on block threads to remove the cap. And the threads are nice and chunky, uh, very smooth, very well machined. Then you've got a tapering black section behind a gold ring and a number six sized Bach made nib, I believe, in 18 karat gold. This is a cartridge converter pen. 
And the section does have metal, so you can't use this as an eyedropper, um, but it's standard international cartridge and converter. You know, kind of your standard standard small batch pen, like a lot of smaller batch pens. They don't come with piston fillers or anything like that. It's just a, a CC pen. And it's beautiful. And it is very, very well made, like every classic pen, classic pens pen I have ever used. You're not going to have to worry about construction quality with these pens. It's just not an issue. Nor, I might add, are you going to have to worry about writing quality with these pens? Also, not really an issue. And the nib on this is pretty spectacular. Now, I know a lot of people tend to get a little eye rolly at the concept of a, a number six size Bach nib. Um, even I, or, or Yovo nib, even I tend to be a little bit kind of, oh boy, another pen with a Bach nib or another pen with a Yovo nib. And I get it because there are a lot of pens with number six, standard size number six Bach or Yovo nibs where they just screw the nib unit into the section and call it a day. That is not the way Classic Pens does things. These nibs, they, they work with the factory to get nibs made to their specifications. They work on them, make sure that they write. I have yet to try a Classic Pens or Lambrou Pens pen that was not a perfect writer out of the box. And if you're going to spend this kind of money on a pen, that is absolutely the way it should be. This is my new soapbox for season five. A pen should write. If it doesn't write, it's not a pen and it's not worth your money. It doesn't matter how pretty it is. Dang it. Uh, <laughs> I've had a few bad experiences. I may have already ranted about this in another video. I may not have It'll probably come up several more times the course of the season because it is the current soapbox upon which I am standing. In any case, beautiful pen, um, really, really lovely construction, great nib, comfortable in the hand, a little narrow in the section for my tastes. The pen does post, but not deeply, and it makes it very back heavy and unwieldy for my hands, so I don't post it. Also because I don't really want to deal with the possibility of, of you know, marring the finish. It's really that pretty. Okay, so let me show you a few measurements, a few comparison photos, and then let's do a little bit of writing.
The nib on the LM1 is, uh, as an 18 karat gold nib, has a bit of give to it. It's, it's, a, it's a bouncy nib. It's not a flexi nib, and I'm not gonna push this nib because I came real close to springing this one by pushing it in a demonstration I was doing for a job interview. Long story, short version is I was doing a job interview. They kind of said they wanted, it was to teach people, it was to a training job, and they said, okay, I want you to talk to me about some subject on which you are an expert. I don't care what it is, go. And basically, I then had to teach 15 minutes of anything. And of course, what did I turn to? Fountain pens. Well, I started to talk about flex, and I thought, well, this is an 18 karat gold nib. It's got a little give to it. I'm going to I'm going to push it a little bit, show them what it does. And I, I kind of screwed up the nib. So um, unfortunately, this is not the way it came directly out of the factory. I sent it directly to my, uh, my Nimmeister extraordinaire, Mike Masayama, who got it back to the way it used to write. But, you know, don't try to flex this nib. That's not what it's meant for. Uh, it's a beautiful writer now because Mike Masayama is a genius, uh, one of the best in the world, in my opinion, if not the best in the world. He's just that good. I, I've taken several pens to him and like every single one that I've gotten. Lovely nib. Uh, nice, bouncy nib. Really generous ink flow and was when I first bought the pen as well. I bought this pen the same show that I bought the LB5. I, I went by Andy's table in the Washington DC show in 2015. And he had this out and I loved it and I bought it right on the spot. I had really been looking for the green LB5, but he didn't have any out on his table. Went back by his table on Saturday, the following day, and what should behold there on the table but a green LB5. I was like, dang it. <laughs> so in, in a way, I'm glad because I've, I've had a chance to use both this and the LB5. And they're really, this is a wonderful pen. Um, nice, juicy ink flow, really smooth, just kind of floats across the paper. Just really, really good workhorse writer. You know, it is a, a, as a cartridge converter. And with this wet of an ink flow, it does go through ink pretty quickly, but the feed's really able to keep up. I haven't had any issues. In terms of reverse writing, really lovely reverse writer. Just a touch more feedback, but not too much. Kind of an extra fine line there. And man, is this a fun pen to play around with. It is certainly eye-catching. I pull this out in a meeting and I can see people go, you know, look at, looking down to <laughs> thinking, oh man, that's a nice pen. So lovely pen, lovely writer, comfortable in the hand, gorgeous materials, excellent nib. This really is a spectacular all-around pen. If you've watched my other Classic Pens reviews, you know what I'm about to tell you is not going to be a surprise. This is not a cheap pen. It's not. It's not as expensive as you might think, though. Uh, when these pens were listed for sale in 2007, they retailed for around $575 for the fountain pen, which really, considering some of the other pens in that price range, was a spectacular deal. Um, considering the price of the material and how well the nib writes, I've paid a lot more pe for pens that have written a lot more poorly. So, lovely pen. Excellent writer. Now, these are out of production, so if you buy them, you're going to end up buying them on the secondary market. Uh, I will tell you, I believe that these are going for more than the original 575. I believe these are currently going for between the six and seven hundred dollar range. I, I have nothing to back that up other than just intuition and having seen a few of these floating around at pen shows. Uh, they're really popular. If you can find them, they're really popular. They're a far more affordable entry point into this diffusion bonded acrylic than the LB5s or the LB6s, which you know are two, three, five times more expensive than these. So um, if you can find one at, at a decent price and it's something that you're interested in, I cannot recommend these highly enough. They're really lovely pens, great writers. As I mentioned, this is number 90 of 500. And... Uh, couldn't be more pleased. I, I don't know what else to say about them other than I really, really love the pen. Now, I do prefer the LB5s 
to this pen just because I like the slightly larger size and the longer length. Um, but if you're looking for something that is either isn't quite so large or isn't quite so expensive, the LM1 is a really, really good opportunity to get into that world if you can find it at a reasonable price point. Well, I hope that has answered your questions about the Classic Pens LM1 Red Flame. If you have any further questions, head over to penhabit.com and leave a comment there, or you can leave a comment here on YouTube in the comment section below. Also over on penhabit.com will be additional photos and the full written review. And if you have other questions not related to this pen, you can email them to me at penhabit at gmail.com or put them in the comments, the questions form down below if you want them entered into a future Currently Inked episode. Let's see, what else? Other business stuff. If you would like to donate to the Pen Habit or support the Pen Habit in some way, you can have it over penhabit.com. Click on the support link in the header and it'll tell you some information about how to donate or you can order the currently inked notebooks from penhabit.com, pocketnotebooks.co.uk, Van Ness Pens at vanness1938.com, and all of those help keep the pen habit alive. So thank you so much for your support. Thank you for coming to visit and w- looking at this lovely, pretty, my, my precious. So that should do it for this review. Thank you again for joining me here, and we will see you soon for another review on the pen habit. Take care. Bye.